Okay, I welcome you to the session how to prepare your extension for Joomla 4. Um, my name is Alan Moritz. I do Joomla extension design 2007 and I joined at the beginning of the year the Joomla 4 team to help the extension developers to have a smooth mi migration path. So my first question here is who is an extension developer? What are the other people's doing? <laughs> <laughs> because it gets sometimes probably a little bit technical. Just that's my question. Um, to the agenda for today, uh, I will quickly really sh short talk about namespaces in general, what it means. Then also really just touch it dependency injection. Um, then the new MVC layer, how to change a component, because there affects the namespacing, the, uh, are the biggest changes there. Then quickly the modules, plugins, and our backwards and forward compatibility strategy. And at the end, if there are some questions. Namespaces are relatively new. They are um, introduced in PHP in 2009. So we are <laughs> relatively, how to say, how to say that correctly. We have a big gap since that's in the Joomla community or in the PHP community. The biggest benefit of that is a um, defined structure where the class files are. So we, we don't have to do any manual include or require ones or whatever. It's a kind of like composer is a big library who automates that. For example, the, in the early ages there was send. They had these class names with underscore which defined the directory structure. So in terms of, for example, when you have the content model, the, or basically the articles model, the class name was content model articles, or for the any extensions. And now it becomes then in the namespace Joomla component content administrator model articles. JLoader itself can handle them automatically. So we don't have to register any namespace or whatever in in our extensions. It's not needed anymore to create a kind of system plugin which initializes all of that. It comes out of the box. It easily allows us to, in, to distinguish between front-end and back-end classes. For example, at the, mo at the moment we can't have a model with the same name in the front-end and the back-end. And the whole libraries folder of Joomla itself got also namespaced. You can find that in the Joomla 3.8 branch or Joomla 4 in library source Joomla CMS. So that's now the new header of the articles model. Just to give you a quick introduction. The very first statement has to be the namespace statement, which defines the namespace of the file. The ones who are familiar with um, C Sharp or Java, that's uh, the class path. Um, we can include other namespaces, but we don't have to write what we use in, the, in this use statement, but we don't have to write that every time in our code. And the class declaration itself looks relatively small. It's the list model, and that list model is in the namespace Joomla CMS model. CMS model, and, call, and the name is list model. So the namespace itself, we can up have the prefix on the namespace, whatever we want. In the class loader itself, we define that all what comes after administrator is basically the file structure. So when I have my class articles in the namespace blah 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 administrator model, there must be a model in my there must be a folder model with first uppercase um, 
the name first up case M, and then a file articles.php, and then the class loader can automatically detect that. So basically, JMod legacy get instance becomes deprecated. We can directly write new articles model. Um, quickly, we do a little bit of dependency injection. It's really no voodoo. Um, it allows us better unit testing. And the biggest change is basically there for us extension developer that the application and the input get injected into the, into the dispatcher. I'll explain later what the dispatcher is. Um, but basically, from there, we can then inher or pass that down, the application and the input down till to the view or the table or whatever the input of the application is used. The biggest changes got the MVC layer. Um, we have actually in Joomla 3, we have the new, the new MVC, <coughs> we have the legacy, Mostly the legacy, the extensions use the legacy layer. Um, so what we did, or basically what Eve did, is he converted comconfig, which uses the new MVC, to the legacy MVC, which becomes now the namespace MVC. <laughs> right, um, basically we try to, to unify that, that for extension developers there will be one way to create your extension. Also, FOF gets deprecated or removed. Fine. Remove. So, yeah, and we also probably deprecate the new MVC layer that there will be really one way for us extension developer to create an extension. Um, a quick, quick class mapping. Um, what was till now J controller legacy is now has now the namespace Joomla CMS controller controller. The same for model. The view becomes abstract view because there is, um, we split it J view legacy between an abstract view and an HTML based view. Mostly all of our views are HTML based. Um, table and plugin, they also got new class names. <coughs> So the biggest thing is component namespacing. So I put here a um, picture about how it looks actually in the Joomla 4 branch, the content component. We see the controller, field, helper, model, table, and view. They have all their first letter is uppercase. That means um, it's, uh, in these folders are classes. The ones with lowercase, they are um, there for config files, XML files, template files, whatever. Um, the only thing which is not namespaced in an extension is the dispatcher. Uh, I will come to that later. That's really instead of the content.php file, which makes J controller legacy get instanced and executes the task from the input. We have now a dispatcher where we can define the namespace in it and it loads automatically the controller, it makes ACL checks, loads, loads the language and everything. We don't have to do that manually anymore by our own. And we write start from the beginning with a class. We don't have a kind of um, a file which doesn't belong anymore to a, to a class hierarchy. To namespace then the classes. So it took me like two, three hours to namespace um, com content. So it's really, it's just like for us extension developers, it's a move of files. And what we have to do, we have, for example, J factory, we have to add a backslash before it. Because there are, like now we have um, the classes which we just write J factory. They, in a, in a namespace environment, they must have their kind of a, in a root namespace as it was before. So they all need a, a backslash before it. I will show an example afterwards. Um, we also start that 
we inject um, <coughs> from into the controller and the controller then into the model a uh, new MVC factory interface that basically allows us to create views, models, tables of that and it in some way it allows us then to mock them when we want to do some unit testing of models and tables. Uh, this MVC factory, this all works transparent. So there is a legacy MVC factory which uses still the get instance as it was before, and there is a new one which just loads the classes from the from the namespace. The front end namespace of a component is I put here an example. For example, the first part is the vendor, and it needs component, then the component name and on front-end side and on back-end administrator. So it's really like we can then load the model from the front-end or the back-end or even views or controller or whatever. What is not done yet on that, um, all the helper stuff, for example the content helper where we where come categories magically creates a class and calls the add submenu function. This is not done, then root helper, query helper, associations. So basically all this helper, well, that we need to probably take on a case per case basis. That we say some part we kind of keep that magic, on other parts we um, want to do that through plugin events. It's really something we need to go iterative case by case. And also JHTML is not done yet because we also want to, to namespace that. Because like that, there is a new, at the moment there is a new um, signature then to load the fields. So also the fields are namespaced. It's a, uh, yeah, it's really, um, it kind of moves us to a more modern approach. If there are questions, don't hesitate. Interrupt, yeah, Peter. Um, you showed in the last slide the, uh, the namespace for front end and back end. Uh, how is that reflected in the folder structure? So the question was how does the folder structure look like then um, for the front end and back end namespace? I can show that quickly in the code. Mm. It's, I really have <laughs> bad resolution here. I don't know if. So the folder structure is for com component stays, everything stays the same. I have my component here. Ah, that's not this genre for. I have my component here. Then for example com content. So we migrated or the Tuan from Chum Donation, he migrated every component to, to namespaces. And so we have here, for example, I was the articles model. That's here in the com content in the model folder. And on the front end, it looks in the same. Components, com content, and have here also the model folder with articles. So it's not using PSR4. It's a. Uh, we you can define for a namespace where it where it is. It doesn't have to be the full namespace down. So I guess that's PSR. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Automatically, even plugins, plugins and. What? How does Jula know the components? Uh, Scan, yeah. Scanning all files? Or no, it's, um, for example, Java works the same. I mean, it, it knows where to start from and then it has the root. And for us, we have, um, we have, a, we basically know where the files are. If you follow the, the Joomla convention, like this no, convention. No, but how, how, can, how do you get the list of components? It's um, 
it's, you don't need the list upfront. So the class loader was changed the way that when uh, namespace is requested and that namespace is not found till now, it makes the, the folder look up based on that and adds then the namespace to the registered one. So it's really only the namespaces which are needed are loaded and not for all extensions. So it's kind of like performant and less zero. I can show you afterwards the code if you want. Slash slash part. Yeah. Requested class which tries to help to find it. Exactly. It's it's just also it just works if um, an extension is following that pattern. <coughs> yes, class. Uh, what about compatibility? For instance, if you want to make a component that would work both on Joomla four and for instance, with Yeah, I come to that later. That's that's a really big thing that or big thing that's for me as extension developer it was it's really important that our strategy will then, then be that every Joomla 3 extension runs on Joomla 4 and every Joomla 4 extension will then run on Joomla 3.9. But I come to that later in how we <laughs> try to achieve that. Can you display the contents of this page of the I guess not on the that's the content. That's the content dispatcher file. That's most of the files now. They just look like that. So what you do? Define here the, the namespace, and it's content dispatch, and everything is uploaded by itself. Basically, the, the dispatcher itself, the base class, has, has a lot of logic. Of no. It's not a lot of logic, but it's basically it it, com it reduces or uses that what we have, what every extension developer has. It's, it's content.php or banners.php file. Want to see the code of the dispatcher? I will check it later myself. Good. Um, there is a change in form <coughs> because form J form is a kind of not weird, but it's um, it loads the fields based on classes. So class like kind of overloading the fields or registering fields is a it's a bit strange on that part. Um, to keep backwards compatibility, we needed to find a way how you can now define the namespaced fields. So what we added is an add field prefix, similar to add rule path and add field path, where you can define where to look for, uh, for fields. So that is an addition. It first looks for, um, for files in the folders. If that's not found, then it looks if a class exists which follows that pattern. So if you only use core fields, you can just use your XML from Joomla 3 and Joomla 4. If you have your own field, then you have mostly add field path, and that needs to be then, that or basically that field set gets then a new um, attribute add field prefix where you add your prefix. Also, if you include fields from other components, for example, com categories, <coughs> You need them to add that. It's also it's backward compatible, so you can have both attributes at the same time. So your XML file is valid then in Joomla 3 and Joomla 4. Good. Is to the component part, are there questions? Um, modules itself, they stay the same. Still, you have your single entry file where you load uh, the template file from. 
Um, their namespacing only affects additional classes. For example, if you have um, if you have a helper, I made here an example with the in the backend with the news flash. I guess was it. For example, I have here still the single entry file, then I load the articles, I use the namespace articles model and the mod latest helper, which is in the folder, in the mod latest folder, in the helper folder. And what I can do then, I can just write mod latest helper and add that new article, pass a new articles model. So we could we could reduce the manual include or jloader import call and also like the jmodel legacy add include path and jmodel legacy get instance of the model. You can just write new articles model and everything is done. There is for sure this the same pattern as from components you have you have a namespace which ends with administrator if it's an admin model, it ends with site if it's a site model, and all the namespace classes get loaded automatically. Um, plugins. We, I made a peer to namespace plugins and to define um, uh, the plugin class in the manifest file. Uh, didn't get accepted. So plugins itself, they stay the same. We have the, the not namespaced plugin class. Um, for here the same, if it has additional classes, you can easily namespace them. Their the structure is the self. Uh, it's a little bit different than for modules and components. We don't have for plugins administrator the site or globally. So the structure is that the first part is the vendor, then the plugin, and then to the group they belong to, and the plugin itself. So, backwards compatibility. Um, as I said, we, the target is to, to run the Joomla 3 extensions and Joomla 4, and the Joomla 4 extensions will then will make them possible to run on 3.9. We can't do that earlier because after 3.7, we just want to have the router in 3.8 um, and some namespacing <coughs> of libraries, but basically just the router and 3.9 will become then kind of back the compatibility version between 3.9 and 4. So you can then, as extension developer, can then namespace your extension at the point where you want when 4.1 is released or earlier, 4.0, if you are adventure enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically that component will then also run on 3.9. We did that through a class mapping file. Um, we map libraries, every library we move to a namespace, we map the old, old class. For example, JForm, we create the class mapping that it maps to Joomla CMS form form. So if you use in your code, J4, in your Joomla 4 extension, JForm, it's still possible. The ID doesn't find the class, but you can still write JForm in your code and it works. Also, the changes we make, for example, the, um, the JForm example with, um, with the add field prefix, we mostly add changes. We don't replace old code. The only exception here is the event system. That got basically a really big overhaul, and um, there, I re yesterday I tested uh, my extension, DB Calendar, to how it will work on Joomla 4. I had to, the biggest changes I had to do was on, um, on the event registration and with the dispatcher and stuff like that, how to trigger that new. Now it's through component. 
so on that. But beside that, the extension was was installed. <laughs> it didn't look nice because it really it's a new backend, but that's expected. But the, the functionality itself is still working with a Joomla 3 extension on Joomla 4. Um, we have also planned to support the Joomla 3 extensions through the whole life cycle of Joomla 4. So you really have kind of the life cycle for Joomla 4 allows you then to migrate slowly, slowly your extension to Joomla 4. There's also some changes made on a service-oriented architecture that um, all the get instant stuff becomes replaced then and you can do that through the container but that's in kind of early stages. Um, what you also want to get rid of is the class overloading. At the moment you can, if you have a system plugin which get triggered very, very early, you can overload core classes. It allows you, for example, to overload J model list. And that's, yeah, that's something we still support, but we don't recommend anymore to do that in Joomla 4. And as I said, the event system got... That will break a lot of components. It's still possible. It, um, if you open Joomla.org, you will see that Joomla is free open source flex for the constant management system. Yeah, good. I don't know if it should be that flexible that you override core classes because you can break a lot in there. And yeah, it's, it's really class overloading shouldn't be a feature to, to get the batch flexible. But sometimes you to break any in, class. Current, huh? in the current implementation of the, uh, for instance, month, month late one system or uh, ACL, uh, for instance, you need to override classes to, to be able to place the core functionality because you cannot extend it through the common interface because there's no interface, it's hard to code it. So, so uh, first question is why do you want to replace us ACL? Second question is why do you not change the existing ACL that it gets <coughs> kind of more flexible? For example, I guess, don't get me wrong, but I guess you was overriding module helper. module helper, but you changed that to plugin events. Is that correct? And uh, now it's still overriding module helper. It's still overriding? Okay. So, yeah, I guess I suggest on that point really that we should make Joomla, if it's required to overload classes, that we change Joomla the way that it should not be necessary. We have you can I completely agree with you, but, uh, but at the moment we are not yet there, so we, 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 we prevent overloading uh, any core, basically any horizontal component of work right now. Mm. That's why this, that feature still exists. We are not taking it out, it still exists. You can, you can, even, you can overload JFORM, the class, or you can overload the namespace, then it will work in both directions. Took me a couple of hours <laughs> to implement that that way, but it's still supported. But we are not kind of recommending to do that that way. It's better to to add some hooks where you can in, get into. And then I was yeah, I was looking at your code as I did that feature, and then. But still, you can load your own class before version. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Do you want to say something? Right now, we have a problem with new router. We have some custom views in com content. And it's impossible to register them in new router. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And don't tell me that I, uh, that I should make a PR and have these new views because they are very specific. <laughs> Nobody would like them. Okay. Some more questions to backwards compatibility because it will affect all of us. Do 
So basically the J dispatcher class, J event dispatcher class, they don't exist in Joomla 4 anymore. Um, you need to trigger an event through the um, to J factory get the application trigger event. That's the same signature. If you want in Joomla 4 the event dispatch, you need to go over the container. So there is a new function J factory get container or I don't know, I guess the application is also container aware, which should have a get container function. And it's then kind of like service which you can overload. Yeah? Any changes in the database? What? In the database. Any changes? Yeah, there are some minor changes still now. But no. 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 Now it's really like I did I did at the beginning like I for some pull request I used the same database for Joomla 4 and Joomla 3. So it's like, yeah, it's the only thing is basically with template because then we have in Joomla 4 a new template, the new name, and so that's not installed. If you if you just move, copy the code over a Joomla 4 installation to 3 code, it searches for Protostar, but yeah, it's really minus. Good. Um, I will put the slides later, uh, later on our website. Um, if there are not any more questions, I will thank you for the interest. I'm here around the conference for, um, for feedback. Um, it would be interesting to hear what you guys think about it. Yeah. Wish you a nice... Yeah, Alibaba? Yeah. Uh, from our previous transition to Shunapi, no, the main problem was in the user interface in Bootstrap because it was a, an early stage of Bootstrap at that time. Now we are going to uh, implement the user interface with Bootstrap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer the question because I'm, uh, I'm more in backend involved in the PHP side. Um, Front-end team is also around here. Uh, yeah, but basically for the front-end, for the views, especially in the backend, you kind of need to go back to the state where you had a... So I did that, for example, in my extension, I had a layout for yeah. Joomla 2 and Joomla 3. So basically that would be then, I guess, the same for Joomla 3 and Joomla 4. <coughs> Except you... Make you completely your own. <laughs>